Hello. Hello. Am I speaking with Claudia Golden? Yeah. This, this, I'm calling from NobelPrize.org. My name is Adam Smith. Yes. Yes. I, I'm, I was trying to get onto the press conference, and I was somehow thrown off the phone. It is most unfortunate. I'm so sorry that that happened. It must. Uh, that's fine. But the person who took my place did an, an excellent, excellent job, and I must congratulate her. <laughs> <laughs> she was good. I think she, she deserves a, a portion of the of the Nobel. <laughs> How lovely! Yes, yes. She she was she was excellent uh, under. under she she under was incredible. Many congratulations on the award. Thank you very, very much. T tell me, how did the news reach you? Uh, the news reached me by phone this morning when I received uh, a, a call and, and uh, was awakened by it very pleasantly. <laughs> that is a nice way to be woken. I imagine you wake up pretty fast with that news. Yes, and since I go to sleep very late, it wasn't that much after I went to sleep. Yes. What was the first thing you did on hearing about it? Uh, the first thing I did upon uh, hearing it was um, I uh, told my husband, who obviously had some idea of what was going on, he, he uh, smiled. He said, that's great. Uh, tell me, just tell me what to do. And I uh, told him to take the dog out and make some tea and that, um, that I had to prepare for a press conference, oh. which I wasn't <laughs> part of. I'm glad the dog made it into this call as well, because, of course, Pika features on your website. Yes, the dog is, is right here. He's, he's a very mature animal. He understands what to do. In the context of somebody who studies historical trends in gender equality, yes. What does the award of this prize mean to you? Only the third woman to have been awarded the economics prize, the first unshared economics prize to a woman. Uh, well, it, it certainly means a, a tremendous uh, amount. It also means a lot because it's an award uh, for big ideas and for long-term change. Uh, the Nobel is often given for extraordinarily important findings and ideas, often theoretical, um, but there have been uh, prizes awarded for uh, what I call big ideas and long-term change, and several of them were given to my teachers and to their teachers. So I was a student of Bob Fogel, mm -hmm. who won a Nobel Prize in Economic History with Doug North, <clears throat> and I was also a student of Gary Becker's. Uh, I am a third-generation Nobel since Bob Fogel was a student of Simon Kuznets. There's there's an emphasis on the detective work in your in your studies, and that yes, and that's a lovely concept. The idea that of the researcher as detective. Can you just tell us about that? Yes. Well, I I have always thought of myself as a detective, and and I wrote. Many years ago, over 20 years ago, I wrote a, um, a piece called The Economist the Detective. And um, uh, I've always wanted to be a detective. I've been a detective since I was a little kid. Uh, I wanted uh, long ago to be a bacteriologist and to find, uh, to my detective work under a microscope. But instead... I do my detective work with uh, archival documents, with large amounts of data. I mean, there was a time when we didn't have this tremendous amount of data stored, and one had to pull it out from archival documents. That's physical work. That's dirty work, isn't it? It's dirty work. But the point is, being a detective means that you have a question. And the question is so important that you will go to any end to, to find it. In addition, the detective always believes that there is a way of finding the answer. <laughs> and that's the way I have always done research. That's wonderful. And it's the passion for the question that drives it all, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think that that's what it is. Sometimes questions are so large and so important that no one's going to tell you that you can't answer them takes you right back to being a childhood detective when children don't understand that there are limits to what they can do, which is wonderful. Uh, precisely. When I was um, 
uh, in high school and got interested in the field of bacteriology, I would read about the famous microbe hunter. That wonderful book by Paul de Creef. That's exactly right. And it has influenced countless individuals. That book has influenced generations of laureates before you. And how, how lovely that uh, it continues to be an yes. influence. Yes. Yeah, and so they're, they're, now, they're now interviewing my doppelganger. Oh, you, you're, in, you're interviewing uh, Randy. Oh, yes. Randy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever met Randy, but I certainly need to meet Randy. <laughs> well, you, and you certainly will come December. Oh, that's wonderful. And once again, many congratulations. Certainly. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed hearing this call, don't miss our bonus episode where Adam Smith takes a turn as guest and we go behind the scenes from these very special moments. Find it on Acast or wherever you listen to podcasts.